the rapporteur, Mr. Sal, you have seven minutes. Merci, Monsieur. Thank you very much indeed, President. Perhaps just a few words to uh, set the record straight, because a number of parliamentarians, of course, supported what we're trying to do. I mean, this is a very thorough piece of work over the last two or more years in the Council of Europe, and I've been working on this in the French Parliament for 20 years now. I'm very sorry to say that I've heard all kinds um, of untruths, counter-truths. I mean, Mr. Binley alleging that this is a purely French report. Absolutely not. We, within the Council of Europe, work for Europe, and we're not doing a purely French report. Uh, uh, Mr. Wald, as well, probably uh, doesn't know uh, exactly uh, what uh, uh, the unit uh, is that we were alluding to. It's actually an official French government body on which parliamentarians sit so as to ensure that parliamentarians are kept properly informed. It's not any kind of a sector or anything. You might have thought that. But I can assure you, French parliamentarians have done an awful lot of work on this subject. And God only knows that in France, we do respect freedom of religion. Freedom of thought is a fundamental right enshrined in our constitution. But we have done a great deal of work on sects and on all votes, we have unanimous results in the French Parliament. Now, the fact that there's such a thorny, vexed, and difficult issue is uh, indicative of the fact that we would generally expect to find ourselves faced with the same kind of political split as we do in the National Assembly and other subjects, but that is not the case here. As I say, there is unanimity in the French Parliament, which is rare in our democratic parliaments. Now, you also talked about legal uncertainty, something that Mr. Gilecci was very exercised about, saying that there's no definition of the word sect. Now, it's quite true to say that, generally speaking, sects are associations. But having said all of that, I mean, it's not sects on trial or anything like that here, rather the kinds of abuses or excesses which would breach minors' rights. And I can give you a few examples. I can assure you that all of those abuses or excesses are in the penal codes in all our countries. So mental destabilization, excessive financial demands, causing them to break off all contact with their original environment, um, um, impairing their physical integrity and antisocial indoctrination, any kind of social trouble, and also looking at whether and it's a borning of traditional economic um, circuits. Now, you can always claim that those kinds of abuses don't exist, and of course we'd all rather they didn't, but I can tell you they do. Now, we've been producing reports on the subject for over 20 years now in France, and I can tell you that in your own countries there are about 200 different sect-like movements. You've got 180,000 Jehovah's Witnesses in France alone. So when you talk to a number of victims, people who've managed to get out of the clutches of these sects and have not been strong enough to go to the courts because often psychologically and even physically they are impaired and they're unable to take cases to the courts, they tell us that a lot of children are forced to give 23 hours of their time to the Jehovah's Witnesses every week to distribute pamphlets and engage in propaganda for this particular sect. Now, you know what? You might think that this is pointless. You might think that everything we're doing is counterproductive. You might think that we are somehow against minority religions. But you could not be more wrong. In France, I can assure you that we would have gone to the courts. We've not been able to take this further. What we're doing here is standing up today to defend children, to defend their integrity, and to protect them. And if the Council of Europe does not adopt this resolution today, then really I think it would be complicit with those um, who are harming young people.